All right, so we, we looked at magnetic fields using a solid powder. We used iron powder, iron filings to kind of long, line up along the magnetic fields. But this time we're going to look at it using a liquid. And this liquid's called ferrofluid. Basically, it's a ferromagnetic fluid, meaning it's a liquid that's going to be attracted to a magnet. Now, we want to do this in a Petri dish because this will make a mess and run everywhere, and it's hard to clean up, so we want to try to contain it in a small area. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the dropper here, and just put maybe two of those, just put it in there good, squeeze up some, that'll be good. You can squeeze up some ferrofluid in there, just be careful not to drip it and put that in our petri dish. And we'll do maybe two of those. You can just squeeze it all out in there. And then we'll put a magnet under there and we'll look at some, that'll be good there. Once it starts kind of bubbling, go ahead and get a little bit more. Kind of sprays everywhere there at the end of it because the air is coming out too. That's good there. All right, I'm going to set this over here out of the way. So what we're going to look at with the ferrofluid, once I put a magnet underneath, you'll be able to sort of see that magnetic field. And you see it kind of spiky looking, right? It looks like a little porcupine or something in there. But that's actually those lines of force coming out of the magnet. And you can see as the magnet gets closer, they actually get smaller. But we can actually move that around and you can actually see the size, see kind of the shape of the magnetic field using ferrofluid. If you want to just hold that and kind of run that around under there a little bit, you can kind of move it around some. There you go. Don't, it's better if you don't quite touch it, just get it close. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So if it gets closer, it gets smaller. Mm -hmm. But when it's not close, it gets bigger. Yep. And that's the thing is, you get further away, all you're picking up, you're picking up kind of the stronger lines of force. Because, like you know, if you take a nail and a magnet, the further away you get the magnet, the less pull it has on the nail. So what you see there, you see fewer lines, but those are the stronger lines of force in the magnetic field. As you get it in, you see lots of smaller ones also. But that's kind of the neat thing about ferrofluid. You can make some interesting designs, patterns, and almost like artwork with it, which is what we're going to do here in just a minute. And we're going to actually use the ferrofluid now to make a little bit of a sculpture with our magnetic fields. Because if you remember from class, if you take a magnet and put it next to a ferromagnetic object like this steel bolt, it's going to line up the electrons in the, in the bolt, and it's actually going to turn the bolt into a temporary magnet. So now, not only is there a magnetic field from the magnet, but you've got a magnetic field from your bolt. So we're going to use our ferrofluid now to make us a sculpture here on these temporary magnets that we created. And in order to do that, we're just going to take our dropper, and if we just add this just a few drops at a time, you'll see it starting to take the shape of the magnetic field. You can just add it very slowly, and it kind of, it almost looks like flowers on top of it. But again, that's those lines of force coming off of the magnetic field. That's why ferrofluid is so neat because you can actually sculpt with it, you can make neat patterns with it, and it's, it's really a lot, it's messy, but it's a lot of fun to play with.